The list of things to do on a boat never seems to end, or even shrink. You add three things for everything you tick off, and the winter and spring can be a tricky time to do any work. So we've been changing a lot of the gate valves for ball valves, and in the process we've been grabbing on to the base of the through hull and trying to wrench the valve around. But two of our valves actually managed to untwist the through hull, so now we've got to rebed those ones. So we don't want this to happen with the raw water for our head. So went on a mission trying to find a pipe to shove into the through hull. But a friend of ours told us we could just put a wrench inside of it, grab another wrench and just kind of hold it in place so that it doesn't loosen itself. So we're gonna try that. So I got my adjustable and a handful of wrenches. These ones are a little bit too big. It turns out I need like eight millimeter, it seems, or a little, little smaller for that. Luckily, we have this little thing with an eight millimeter little hex wrench and uh, a 10 millimeter on the other end. So this just happens to fit that hole just perfectly. So let's get this done. I'm trying to make a watertight seal on all of those ball valves and through holes and all that. And I'm using Teflon tape. Apparently that works really awesome. And you just get to cover all those little ridges in a clockwise fashion. And you don't want to put any on the last little bit here so that none of this Teflon tape goes into the holes. So we're trying this. All right, I can do that with my hands. Hey Alex. Okay. What time is it? Beer o'clock! Woo! Yeah. Let's do it. Amongst the mess. I'm just showing the mess of our boat right now during our working hours. <laughs> Going out. Wow. Cheers. Mm. The break ball of beer is so good. That's a griffin and it's awesome. Hmm. Oh yeah. Not sponsored, but wish we were. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just enjoying uh, some beer now while working on some projects. And it's kind of a cool vibe over at the marina right now because everybody's just working on their boats. It's been the first sunny day in a, a, a while on the weekend. And yeah. it's going to be the only sunny day for the next week. Yeah. So yeah, getting as much done as possible. If it's three we, like this, I'm losing my stuff. As you can see, there's still a lot of ice that blew, blew in last night. So we're not getting in the water anytime in the near, near future, but it's coming up fast. So I finally managed to put the through hole, well actually the ball valve on with the adapter so that we can reconnect the raw water intake for our engine. Woohoo! What are you doing down there? Um, trying to fix our mistake from being newbies because we installed some bow valves like this guy and this guy, this big guy here. And we weren't really paying attention. We were trying to hold on to the little threads of this through hole and didn't do the best job of keeping it still. So underneath the, the seal cracked and you can see where the paint cracked all the way around it. So we're going to rebed these so we're sure that they're watertight. So this one and this one. Replacing the plastic one for the original bronze one that Corey got out. So. Teflon tape, and we've got to try to put this on. 
clockwise. I really like Teflon tape. A lot of to work with. But it works. Beautiful. And you want to make sure you don't go all the way to the edge. So we're removing through holes. Stubborn. So this is how we remove a through hole. One of us heats up the actual through hole because it's really tight. So I hold the wrench. And Alex provides the leverage. Are we ready? Wait, one second. All right, we're on. Leverage. Yes, leverage. Beautiful. It's loose. <laughs> it's probably still quite hot, but it's loose. Woo! So I borrowed this heat gun from work, but I've realized how handy ha they are just for, for both shrink wrap and for just heating up pipes and stuff to be able to make it a lot easier to remove them. So I'm definitely going to be picking one up myself. Um, it's uh, way better than a lighter, a, tor a mini torch or something. So definitely worth investing. We sanded and cleaned the hull with acetone to get rid of the old caulking. We really wanted our through hulls to stay on the sailboat and not leak yeah. once in the water. So we decided to use a marine sealant, 5200, which is meant for watertight seals that you won't be taking off. It makes a really strong bond, which is super hard to take apart. Even getting it out of the tube is a challenge. The toughest was to finally have temperatures above 5 degrees to apply it. Corey is putting a wrench in there so they can start tightening the nut because the whole thing moves. So that's not working. We have our ball valves attached! Yoop, yoop, yoop. I hate this thing. So much easier with the orange thing. On the orange thing. Okay. The orange thing coming right up. Here comes the orange thing. It's not coming. Open. It's hard to open things with one hand. Why are you on stuff with one hand? I'm trying, trying to throw <coughs> the crack at the bottom. Put it in the right way, damn it. Here you go. Orange thing. Thanks. Alright, what are you doing down there? Show show our wonderful audience. <laughs> I'm resetting up our sink through hole. So putting the hose clamps. Double hose clamp for the win. We had a plastic through hull below the waterline, or at least on the edge of the waterline, which isn't recommended as it won't last long, so off it goes. Five grade, said. Might go for five grade. Go to me. Wishing the boat? No, the, the lift. Woo! It's out! This used to be plastic and it's not bronze. It's a tight one. I'm putting on our last ball valve 
so that we don't sink when we launch next week. So put in some Teflon tape, get a couple of connectors to attach to it. But we've got a bit of a problem because the threads in this, at the bottom of the sink, I think there's something wrong with them because the thing doesn't really want to twist on. So Corey finally managed to just like yank it and get it on. Hopefully that's going to hold. At least it's not the one to the through hole. If not, we'll have to figure out something else. Going in. I mean, at least that one isn't all the time in the water. So we could always just like pull it yeah, out if sure. something was to happen. But we got all, br uh, well, we had bronze and then... No, no it sorry, was plastic, that one. We had plastic at one point here uh, with no valve whatsoever. And then we accidentally picked up a brass through hole and then realized it wasn't the right one so now we have a bronze one it's actually really tricky to find the right parts when you're working on a boat because most of the hardware stores they're gonna have brass stainless actually stainless is tricky to find or just regular metal so finding bronze can be challenging and way more expensive we are finishing up the last through hole of the one in the head so right now I'm trying to cut the holes and hopefully it's going to bend because it's a bit of a sharp bend. So I'm going to heat it up. It's way more malleable. Let's see. Mission successful. The through hole, ball valve, new holes and everything is connected to the sink. Hopefully there's no leak. Corey's filming. Hi. we're still getting some pretty awesome things it's just it's been really weird this week we've had the fog like for a couple of days it disappeared and now it's just all rolled back in and the ice like everything was covered just a couple of days ago and then within one day it just all thawed up and since then the ice kind of moves in and out and in and out of the marina but we're hopefully gonna be in the water within the next week or two weeks so exciting but we need some warm weather because we can't do some of the work which isn't fun all sorts of ducks like mergensers and mallards along with canadian geese and cormorants started arriving at sugarloaf marina this meant that spring was here but it sure didn't feel that way it was still so cold which is why we didn't do as much as we thought while being on land. At least, these kinds of sunsets make it so enjoyable. The boats were launched much later this year than in past years. Some have gone as early as the beginning of April, but May is now almost here. This will hopefully be our last winter for a while. And another day ended with the bright orange sunset. We cuddled to stay warm while watching it. I really don't know if you're taking pictures of me or filming me. I'm gonna take this as a you're filming me. We're doing the tow rail. So our tow rail is actually loose, so I'm tightening all the boats. But I need Corey to get off the camera so that we can double team. One down, one up. Come on. Doing the far back one? Uh, the one right behind the rail. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Oh wait, I don't see it. Which, which one behind the rail? Yeah, that's the... Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the stanchion. Yeah, the stanchion. Okay. So, so this one, yeah, that's the one I was on. Yeah, it's just not turning. Actually, I was on the very back one, but it was not turning. So you're good. Keep going. So we were wondering why our VHF wasn't working. The other day when we were looking at the mask we realized a lot of the, the wire was quite broken off from itself. And it's also broken off here. As you can see we have some pretty good corrosion and broken shielding of wires. Along with I think that's the center pin there that broke off and it's a very tiny center pin and a very tiny cable. So yeah, it was no wonder why we had no radio. It was broken in many different areas. And uh, something else that's an interesting surprise because I was sure all of our lighting on our mast was working. Um, I'm surprised if it was working considering I just looked at this connector down here and the wires are basically falling out of the thing. So take a look at this. So the rubber is completely corroded. This wire has popped out. There's actually two out of the four wires. I think they're both grounds. Here's the other one that have popped out of the connector here. Mm, so it must have been B. So I'm just tracing the cable from one end of the mast to the other to try to find out which wires are supposed to connect to the connection point in the sailboat where we actually are supposed to see our wind speed. Now we think it was just because this was unplugged but I just want to double check that all the connections are good. Okay, so really really good news. All of the connections for the wind instrument are actually working. So now it's a matter of figuring out if the actual instrument itself works. But we're missing the cups, so they were all broken up. Found two of them, and I kind of carved a little kid's toy that's about the same size. So we're gonna have to do some testing, glue those on, and fingers crossed. We're gonna test out the wind instruments. So I've been connecting six wires into the ones there, and we'll see if it works. So it's surgery time. We are trying to connect all the colors to the wind instrument. Then I'm gonna go outside and we're gonna spin the thing. He's in the middle. This is not move. Move the long cable so it's not pulling down on these wires so much, please. Which long cable? The longest one, this one. Let's see if this works. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Doesn't really want to work. I saw a number one at one point for like a split second, but yeah, I don't know. Even though the sailboat is on land, if we look at the bow, it almost feels like we are in the water. But with all the ice, I'm really happy we're not in we'd turn into the Titanic pretty quick with crushed hull. When we first moved aboard, I didn't realize how one day I'd end up missing sailing. It's so peaceful and exciting at the same time. And this was a new adventure for both of us. Life is full of surprises and you have to seize the day and live without regrets. How was the sending? It was uh, pretty good. There's quite a few layers of paint on there.